everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are just gonna do a really casual Christmas prep with me. It is so dreary, cold, and rainy out, so I figured it would be a perfect day to just stay inside, get cozy, and get some last minute Christmas activities done. I have a little DIY, I wanna do some present wrapping, some baking, and then I have a really cute last minute gift idea that you can DIY that's super easy and cheap, but people will love it, I promise. So I'm gonna show you how I do that, and yeah, the first thing I wanna start doing is drying out orange slices because I want to use those as garnishes on our present wrapping and I've used these a lot to decorate with in the past but they have all been store-bought so I'm excited to make my own. I'm gonna pop a Hallmark movie on and I've had Hallmark on a lot while I've been editing these last couple of weeks so I made a little list of some of my running favorites so I will link those down below and yeah time to get cozy and start the orange slices. So now that our orange slices are all set and dehydrating in the oven, I really wanted to try this little DIY that I had in my head that I thought would make a really cute last minute Christmas gift. So I just picked up these little wine glasses from the Dollar Tree. They're actually a really great size and seem to be decent quality for the dollar store. So I bought these and then I picked up some enamel glass paints. I just got these at Walmart. They were like $1.50 each. And you know that they are the enamel glass paints from the little wine glasses on the top. So it says that these are top rack dishwasher safe when cured. So to cure them, you let them air dry for one hour and then you put them in the oven for 30 minutes at 350 degrees to cure them. So I remember when I first used these several years ago, the directions said that you had to let them dry for 30 days, like air dry for 30 days. So I'm glad that we can speed up the process. So what I thought would be really cute was just to paint some very simple Christmas trees. And I just thought a cute little festive hand painted wine glass would be super easy. Like I said, these were from the dollar store and the paint just cost me a couple of bucks. So hopefully these will turn out cute. So yeah, let's get painting. Okay, so because I was just painting some simple trees, I only used the brown, green, and white paint colors. And I used the brown because I wanted to tone down the green just a little bit, and I wanted to have more of an earthy, realistic tone to it. So by mixing the brown in with the green, it just helped me achieve more of a muted forest green color. So then I just started painting the trees and I dipped one side of my brush in the white and the other half in the green to get that kind of abstract, two-tone, snow-covered look to the tree. And I just applied simple, small brush strokes starting from the bottom and going up to the top of the glass. And this technique is pretty forgiving. If I made a brush stroke that I didn't like, I just made another one on top of it. And at this stage, the paint is also very easy to just wipe off if you need to start over. And I also really tried to load up my brush with paint because I I liked the added texture that those thick paint globs made and I thought it helped define the texture and shape of the tree a lot better. And these were so simple to do. I love how they turned out and that they look handmade and have that simple abstract artsy look to them. And these would be great white elephant or hostess gifts with a bottle of wine. You could also do so many other shapes or designs. I made a little cocktail glass set for my mom as an early Christmas gift since she is hosting for the holidays and I did a cute little gingerbread man a wreath, a snowman, and a tree, and it was super easy. 
All right, so I am so happy with how these came out. I just think they're so adorable. I was thinking about potentially doing like some little hills of snow and little snowflakes falling down, but then I just kind of decided not to because I really like the understated look of them and I kind of figured less is more with this. I'm probably gonna go to the dollar store and get some more of these just because I'm really loving how these turned out and I'm already thinking about all the people that I could give these to. But yeah, super easy. I'm gonna cure them later once the oranges are out of the oven. But for now, I think we are going to do a no-bake treat and I am not kidding every time I bring these somewhere I get multiple people asking me for the recipe and they are so easy they're just a couple of ingredients a lot of you might be familiar with these I'm not sure because every time I bring them somewhere no one has ever heard of them so I don't know I thought they were pretty well known but we are going to get baking they do require refrigeration I'm going to my sister's graduation this weekend in Florida so that's why I'm making them I'm just gonna bring them down in a cooler with us I always just pop them in a little cooler to keep them chilled and they're always fine so so yeah, let's get started on the treats. Okay, so for these you will need one regular package of Oreos, an eight ounce block of cream cheese, almond bark, and optional mini cupcake liners and sprinkles. First, I started by putting the whole package of Oreos in my Ninja blender, and you wanna make sure these aren't the double stuffed Oreos or it will mess with the consistency. You just wanna get the regular ones, and if you don't have a blender, you can always just crush them up in a large plastic bag with a rolling pin. This is just way faster in my opinion. So once the Oreos are finely crushed up, you want to add your block of cream cheese, and I like mine to be straight from the refrigerator so that the mixture stays cold and moldable. So don't let your cream cheese sit out at room temp, just grab it straight from the refrigerator. And then I just mix that up with my hands. And once everything is combined, you can chill the mixture if you want, but I'm usually very impatient. So I just jump right into forming the truffles. So once the mixture is rolled into roughly one inch circles, I do chill them for a minute or two while I melt the almond bark. And I have used chocolate chips in the past, but almond bark is so much more melting friendly and has the best consistency. And then from there, I just dip the balls into the melted chocolate and I have perfected this technique over the years. I just plop it in, cover the ball with chocolate and use a fork to drain the excess and gently move it back to the pan. And you just wanna avoid rolling the mixture around in the chocolate because little pieces of the Oreo mixture will break off and make the chocolate clumpy. So I just plop it in, cover it and take it out. And if you're adding sprinkles, you'll want to do this shortly after dipping because the almond bark does start to harden pretty quickly. So I just dip and sprinkle in little groups. And as cute as they are, a lot of people in my family don't like the texture of sprinkles. So for them, I just drizzle some extra chocolate on top for added texture. And I've also done this with dark almond bark in the past because it looks really pretty contrasted against the white. I just didn't have any today. So once all of the truffles are dipped and drizzled I will pop them in the fridge for a couple of hours until the almond bark fully hardens and if you were in a rush I've only waited 30 minutes before and they were totally fine but I usually just like to let them sit in there for a couple of hours and from there you can totally just serve them as is and be done but I like to cut off the excess drips on the bottom of the truffles with a knife and then put each one in its own mini cupcake liner and I just think this looks really nice and aesthetic and like I said these are always a hit and I get recipes requests and now I got smart and put them in a video so I could just send people this video <laughs> just kidding kind of but what's nice about these is that you can make them ahead of time and sometimes I'll even make them a couple of days in advance and they do last a while so I love the crunch of the chocolate paired with the soft creamy Oreo inside and these are just so delicious and I guarantee you they will be a hit all right, so here are the orange slices, and I'm not gonna lie, this was a bit more of a touchy project than I thought. As you can see, some of them burned, and some websites said to put them at 175, some said 225, so I just kind of went with 200, which was in the middle, but I think these would have been better at 175, and I noticed the ones that I cut thinner dried a lot better. Um, but I had to take them out because I needed my oven for dinner. So I'm just gonna let these kind of sit overnight and then we will pick up with the present wrapping tomorrow. All right, so it's the next morning and it's still so gross and cold and rainy and foggy outside. So it's nice that we are keeping with the cozy activities. And I realized that I had a brain fart and I didn't get any of the little Christmas cards that I like to put in with my presents, especially when I'm sending them out of state to people and I'm not gonna be there when they open the present. I just like to put a little card in there to like 
write a little message. So I figured I would improvise and I just have this watercolor pad and these watercolor pens. And these are really cool because you just make the strokes with these and then you add the water after. So it's a little bit more controlled, which I like. And I'm just gonna cut these into card shapes. And I figured it'd be nice to have some homemade cards anyway. So we'll just whip these up really quick. It won't take me very long. And then we will get to the present wrapping. Okay, so I just cut the watercolor paper down into card size pieces and folded them. And it's important to have watercolor paper because it doesn't warp when you put water on it. And it's just a nice subtle texture too. So I decided to go along with today's Christmas tree theme and paint one of those. They're just really easy to do and hard to mess up. So I started making some rough strokes with the pens and then I added the water on top. And with the water pen, you can actually fill it with water, but I always dip mine because I feel like I have more control that way so I just went in with the water and blended out the color and this is so cool because it makes your piece look like a true watercolor painting but it's fun because it's honestly a little bit more of a drawing I guess so I just wrote Merry Christmas up top and how cute is this it only took me a couple of minutes to do and I think it's just so sweet to have a homemade personalized Christmas card along with a gift Okay, so now it's time to get to the present wrapping and the first place I started was our backyard because I wanted to get some greenery clippings to use as a rustic woodsy garnish on the presents and I was lucky enough that the weather cleared up a bit so I just gathered some clippings from our Leyland cypress tree. Next, I wanted to make some to and from tags so I just used some of the leftover watercolor paper and folded it into tag sized pieces and then ripped along the fold line. And I love this because the torn edge gives it a little bit of texture and visual interest and then I just hole punched them and then wrote my twos and froms in my black calligraphy pen. Fun fact, this is leftover from our wedding invitations. And next it was time to source our wrapping materials and I always love to buy the brown paper roll from the Dollar Tree. I feel like plain brown wrapping paper can be hard to find this time of year, but the Dollar Tree usually has it and it's so cheap. I also snagged some of these cotton yarn balls from the Dollar Tree as well and these are what I'm going to use as my string. So as I mentioned last year, the actual wrapping of the paper is not one of my strong suits, but I'm going to do my best. So I just started by measuring out the amount of paper to fit over my box and just cut it down to size. And this year I wanted to add some texture. So I just started crumpling up the paper and this is going to help give it that extra bit of visual interest and give my present wrapping that casual rustic vibe. And if you love using pattern paper, you could always do half crinkled brown paper with a pretty pattern. I think that would look really nice too. And by half, I mean like half of your presents, not like half of one an actual present. But now that we have our garnishes all set, I just started by wrapping the cotton string around my box several times. And I like the repetition of two or three strings. And then I just tied in a piece of greenery and added my orange slice. And then finally, I just put the little name tag on top and tied it in place with a bow. And I love the look of the crinkled paper. I think that it just looks very understated and has that kind of organic rustic feel to it, which I love. I also wrapped some of my presents in white as well with an earthy brown colored string just to add some variety and contrast. But I like that it still keeps it simple. So when I pop my own homemade card on top that it lets that kind of steal the show. And I love that this was so easy to do, super affordable, but still looks very aesthetic and gives off that cozy designer feel. All right, everyone, that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this little holiday prep with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help to support my channel. And I'm telling you, if you need to bring a dessert to a holiday party or gathering this season, do the Oreo truffles. They will be an instant hit, I promise. But I just wanna thank you all so much for watching this video and I hope you're having a joy-filled holiday season so far. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.